In this video, we'll look at the Heathkit IP20 transistorized regulated power supply. Power supplies are a common piece of equipment on electronics benches, being needed to power devices for testing, prototyping new circuits, and for operating devices that don't provide their own power supply. Power supplies are mainly characterized by the voltage level that they output. Roughly speaking, they can be grouped into low voltage, about 30 volts and below, and high voltage, above 30 volts. Vacuum tube circuits tend to require high voltages, anywhere from about 150 volts DC to 500 volts DC or more, while solid state circuits generally operate on low voltages, often 12 volts or 5 volts for digital circuits. Tubes also typically require either 6.3 volts AC or 12.6 volts AC to power the tube filaments. A second important characteristic is the maximum current that a supply can produce in amperes or milliamperes. Generally speaking, a greater current capacity implies a larger and more expensive power supply. A given output may be fixed in voltage or variable. A variable output provides more flexibility, while some voltages such as 5 volts and 12 volts are so commonly used that a fixed output power supply for these is useful. As well as voltage, some variable supplies provide a facility for controlling the maximum output current. These are sometimes called constant current supplies when used in this mode. If a current control is not provided, there's usually some way of limiting the current drawn, either limiting it to a fixed maximum and or a fuse or circuit breaker. Supplies may provide meters, either analog or digital, to display the output voltage and or current. Heathkit was a manufacturer of electronics in kit form. Their product line included amateur radio, test equipment, and various consumer products. By building a piece of electronics, you could save money and gain the satisfaction of having assembled it yourself. Heathkit offered many models of power supplies over the years and typically had several models of low and high voltage power supplies at different feature and price points at any given time. The IP20 is a regulated low voltage power supply that produces a single variable output from 0.5 to 50 volts with adjustable current limiting up to 1.5 amps. It was produced from 1962 to 1967 and offered as a kit or factory assembled, the factory assembled version being the IPW20. A 1967 catalog listed at a price of $72.95 and the assembled IPW20 for $114.95. A front panel meter shows the output voltage or current depending on the position of the switch below it. The voltage range switch selects the output voltage in one of 10 ranges that each cover a 5 volt range over the full range from 0.5 to 50 volts. The fine voltage control adjusts the output voltage continuously within the selected range. Similarly, output current limiting can be set to one of four ranges using the current range switch, 50 milliamps, 150 milliamps, 500 milliamps, and 1.5 amps. The current limit control adjusts the maximum output current continuously over the range. The meter scale is automatically set to an appropriate voltage or current range depending on the voltage and current range switches. A toggle switch selects DC on or reset standby. This allows you to set the unit for a specific output voltage and current and then turn off the output such as when connecting or disconnecting the supply to a circuit under test. The output is protected by current limiting as well as by a relay which protects it against overloads or shorts. In the event of an overload, the toggle switch must be moved to the reset standby position. The output is floating. There are plus and minus outputs as well as ground. Multiple units can be connected in series for more voltage or in parallel for more current. The IP20 is typical of the type of test equipment described in my new book, Classic Heathkit Electronic Test Equipment. The book covers Heathkit's test equipment, starting with a brief history of Heathkit, 
an overview of the test equipment product lines, and tips on buying and restoring vintage test equipment from sources like eBay. Separate chapters cover the major categories of component testers and substitution boxes, frequency counters, meters, oscilloscopes, power supplies, signal generators, tube testers and checkers, and miscellaneous test equipment. Each chapter includes one or more in-depth sections that look at a representative model from my Heathkit collection covering its features, operation, and notable quirks or trivia. The book's available from lulu.com and amazon.com and retails for US $19.95. Let's take a look at the power supply operating. Suppose we want to apply 12 volts across a load, in this case a 39 ohm power resistor. We turn the unit on and set the mode switch to DC on. We set the meter switch to voltage. We select a suitable voltage range for the desired voltage, in this case the 10 to 15 volt range. Then we adjust the fine voltage control for the desired 12 volts on the meter. The current output is currently on the highest 1.5 amp range. Setting the meter switch to current, we can see that the current flow is about 300 milliamps. If we wanted to limit the current to this value, we can set the coarse current control down to the 500 milliamp range. If we reduce the fine current adjust, we reach the point where the output is limited to 300 milliamps and going lower reduces the current on the meter. Now we're in constant current mode and the output voltage will change to maintain the current at the specified maximum level. Looking inside the chassis, you can see that all of the wiring is point to point. It has a large power transformer and several large electrolytic filter capacitors. The manual touts that this is a transistorized power supply, as transistors were still relatively new at the time for high power and current applications like this. The design uses five transistors and ten semiconductor diodes. Several of the transistors are mounted on a large heat sink, and all are on sockets. It also uses a 0B2 gas regulator tube. This is a tube that has no filament, so it does not get hot or need to warm up. It's normal to see a pink glow from it when it's properly operating. The pilot lamp is an unusually large bulb, a 6 watt 686 type rather than the more typical number 47 type. The unit requires some adjustment and calibration which is done using controls and a switch inside the unit. This unit was bought on eBay in December 2013 from a local Ottawa seller. It did not come with a manual, but I found a full copy on the internet. No work needed to be done except cleaning, checkout, and doing the calibration. The current potentiometer is a little noisy. It's a high power wire wound rheostat, which is not easy to find a replacement for. There's a small hole on the front panel. It appears someone drilled it, but I don't know why it was done. The unit is similar in color and case size to other Heathkit equipment of this era, like this capacitor checker and signal generator, but it is deeper due to having larger components inside. The IP20 was replaced by the IP27 model in 1968. It had basically the same features and similar circuitry, although it does not use a 0B2 regulator tube. The styling of the IP27 matches the color scheme and cabinet shape of most of Heathkit's equipment from the late 60s and early 70s. I have another YouTube video on the IP27. 
In summary, the IP20 was Heathkit's low voltage power supply offering in the early 1960s. Undoubtedly, many of them were sold over the six years that the product was offered, and many of them were probably in daily use for decades. Having different voltage and current ranges is a nice touch. Lower quality supplies tend to use one range for output adjustment, which made it hard to adjust accurately. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other YouTube videos on vintage amateur radio and test equipment.